Hi there once again, Steve here from SeltaHelper.com and today I'm going to go through yet more questions from my patrons on Patreon. Now I'm going to cover things about CCQs and ICQs or concept checking questions and instruction checking questions, uh, a bit about pronunciation and whether to learn it and also a little bit about um, the perfect lesson somebody's asked me what what do I think is there a perfect lesson for your CELTA course so we're going to get into all of that very soon now before I start I also wanted to say as you can see I'm making these videos for patrons on patreon and you can find my page on patreon.com forward slash Stephen Beale the link is below this video and it's just a place where you can decide to support CELTA helper with a, a monthly contribution from as little as $5 a month, if you like, which helps to keep the site going because there's lots of services and things to pay for. And obviously it doesn't come cheap to provide this level of service. So if you would like to support the site and help me help more people, that would be fantastic. And also then every fortnight, I ask if there are any questions I can help with and I make a YouTube video like this one to help those people. So. If you want to get involved in that check out the link below and I'll talk to you on patreon another thing to note quite exciting news also I've got an exclusive offer for CELTA helper readers and subscribers and it's basically for when you are wanting to develop as an English language teacher could be before your course during or after it's um, a website that I've been using that I find really useful called language fuel now we've got an exclusive 20% discount code for you to use if you want to become a member and again the link is below the discount code is simply CELTA helper with CELTA in capitals and the H for helper in capitals as well and that will give you 20% off and it's already fairly cheap but that's even better it helps you to get access to all these materials now it's a membership site so you can choose to stay as long as you want it's got all kinds of things in there they've got a, on the lower end they've got the private Facebook group but what they've also offered that's really useful is access to courses to help your professional development and these are made by ELT professionals they've also got the offer of mentoring on there and I mean lots and lots more but the beautiful thing is you can just revisit the courses as and when you want it's a nice tight-knit group of people having these you know really involved conversations about ELT and English language teaching and it's just a really great resource it's also fantastic if you're not able to go to any of these traditional um, places for continuous professional development or CPD maybe they're in London or they're in Barcelona or whatever and you can't go it's a great option because you can be online obviously doing the same things so if you want to check it out remember you got 20% discount use the code CELTA helper and yeah hopefully see you over there um, and then yeah without further ado then let's get stuck into those questions so the first one was about the difference between CCQs and ICQs or so let's take a step back sorry concept checking questions and instructions checking questions so concept checking questions are essentially as the name suggests all about just checking that students have understood the concept ie in this case let's say a language point so for example you want to teach them present simple and you've just just done your presentation perhaps and you've explained the rules for using the present simple afterwards then what you can say is something like okay let's say your example sentence on the board is she has been to Paris yeah and this is something I used I've got a blog article on the site again I'll link to that below with a bit more on this if you want to read and so let's say yeah your example sentence she has been to Paris so you can say to them is she in Paris now and they should say no and you say was she in Paris before and they will say yes okay I mean, that's a very basic one but you can do it however you like the point is you usually want at least two and you want to make the answers very simple make the answers like a binary choice because if not then if you make the concept checking questions complicated then you can really go off track so just keep it so simple and then in terms of instruction checking questions 
you know, let's say you want them to read the text for the gist, but you don't want them to read the questions that go with it. Like maybe they've got comprehension questions. Just before they start, something simple like, what do we do now? And they say, read the text. Do we look at the questions? No. <laughs> okay, why? Okay, maybe that's getting a bit hard, but either way, you just do that before they go off on the activity so you have some certainty that they've understood what they're supposed to be doing. So they're pretty similar concepts. It's just, I shouldn't have said concepts, really. pretty similar ideas, but one is really much for, more for a language point and one is really just to help you with your lesson that it doesn't fall apart and they all go off and do the wrong thing. But again, yeah, I would keep the options perhaps binary or very simple and use at least two for each time. Um, <clears throat> so another point then you asked about, it was I was asked about, let's say, what makes a perfect lesson? Or is there a perfect lesson plan? Really, I mean, like I say all the time, I'm not a self-tutor. I'm doing this as a graduate and someone who's worked in it. But what I understand it to be is a lesson that is well suited to that group of learners, has a variety of activities, and it varies in pace. And it follows what your tutors have told you to do. Now, you don't want it to be too slow and you don't want it all to be too fast. You can't do an hour of games, but equally you can't do an hour of exercises. So you want to get a right balance between up-tempo, down-tempo, stirrers and settlers, as some people call them. And also you want to make sure that you hit the, hit the language, the learning objectives, as you plan to. Um, there's a good article on eltplanning.com. It's a great website as well. Uh, it's got lesson plan frameworks, I think it's called. I'll, again, I'll put a link below. And that has some excerpts from, I think, International House or IH CELTA courses about structuring different types of lessons. So if you're going to do reading or writing, etc., receptive or productive skills, and it gives you a framework to follow. So that's nice because then it really gives you that structure. And you'll probably receive those kind of frameworks on your course. And then moving on, I was also asked about, is it worth learning the uh, phonemic chart for pronunciation before the, the course? And I would say it's definitely worth trying to learn some of it. I wouldn't put yourself under pressure to learn everything because you can learn it as you go. Something that I still do because I still have moments where I under pressure, I panic a little bit. If I'm not sure between two sounds, I just like to keep a copy to hand at all times. You can have one up in the classroom. Some classrooms will have the poster. It's also nice to have the copy on your person during the lesson. So at least you can look back and forth at it. I mean, there's loads of these also in the back of dictionaries. So you can actually, if the students ask you, you can tell them to flick to the back of a paper dictionary if you have that handy and check. Also available on Cambridge Online Dictionary for free, which is a great website. Or great resource but yeah I would keep a copy maybe you want to laminate it so you can just pull it out at any time even just an A4 keep it simple but you don't you know you're not really under pressure to know it perfectly you can also make if you're not sure like I said you can involve the students in getting it right but it's definitely worth looking into yes I wouldn't expect you to be able to reel them off all you know write them all from scratch without before you start the course but just to have some idea, it's worthy, worth doing for sure. So there you go. Oof, I'm running up to nine minutes now, so I won't keep you any longer. But if you want to get your questions answered in this format, check out patreon.com forward slash Stephen Beal. And you can become a patron over there and support the site. If you want more videos like this, click the like button and subscribe. Any questions about what I've said, just leave them in the comments below. And also remember to check out languagefuel.com and enter the code CELTA HELPER to get your 20% discount. So there's lots there. Hope that was useful, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks' time for the next Q&A session. Maybe I'll have another video before that. But either way, talk to you again soon, and remember, check out CELTAHELPER.com for any questions you have. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.